Hi parents. Before um, I get started, I wanted to just let you know that most of the things I'm going to talk about are referred to in this book. I know that you've been overwhelmed with new information and getting everybody in the right place um, at the right time. And so on behalf of the other kindergarten teachers, I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting your child and for being a troubleshooter for them and collaborating with us as teachers. On this page, it says tips for a productive work time. And so do take a, take a second look at that now that you've seen a couple of days of school um, and make sure that you have sort of that big picture in mind. Um, there's also a drawing that suggests how your workspace might look. I know that in your home environment, it's hard to dedicate the space um, that we're suggesting you take and so make it work for you. But also remember that the more um, tools and um, resources you can put up in your in your child's work area, the more help helpful and um, it will also um, help them build an independence. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about independence specifically. I know that it's tempting as parents to give them one item at a time of their supplies, but there are two challenges to that. One is that you're really busy as a parent just navigating the tech problems that come up, and um, in a lot of cases, other family members or Heaven forbid you have an actual job that you're supposed to be attending to. So we really want to build independence um, in the children, but also because in the classroom environment, we ask a lot of independence of the students. And so really what you're helping them do by requiring them to be a little bit more independent at home is setting them up for success once they get into the classroom. So I want to show you two ways to do that. One way is just getting ready for the class time and the materials that they should have ready every given at, at any given time, whether they're at grandma's house or in their own, very own bedroom or at a kitchen table, they need to have access to all of their school supplies that we sent to them. And um, if, if you don't have it handy, it can be really distressing for them. So I'm gonna make a couple suggestions about that. First of all, let me show you what should be in that bin. In addition to their iPad, which is kind of like their, their central hub, they should have their tools in this box that we gave them, which you're gonna bring back to school when we open up um, on the physical campus. And in it should be all of those things, scissors, glue stick, dry erase, um, markers, crayons, Play-Doh, all of those things so that when we say get this out, they can do that and they don't have to go hunting for it. The other thing that's really important for them to have, and here I put it in a Sterilite box that I just happened to find in the classroom, um, their writing folder, stocked of course, their morning work, their morning meeting folder um, with their weather cards already in there, their word work binder, and their math work. So that stuff should all be together and if you find that you have to be um, up and out the door to get the kids to, or to, to get your child to um, somebody else's house, um, please put it in a tote bag or something so that it's all in one spot. And that way, um, when their teacher, myself, Ms. Okuno or Mrs. Chang, asks your child to get such and such item out, that they have it. Um, other, other options are just a, an Amazon box, this is kind of fun because they can decorate it and kids love owning things um, that they can decorate with stickers or markers or whatever. They could even put their name on it. And this could just sit in the floor in the kitchen or close by wherever they're gonna be working. Another thing that they could use is if you have a basket, you could lay them down in the basket so that they can just carry their basket to their work spot. So please let them um, take ownership of their materials and keep them all together in one place where they can access them whenever they need them during the synchronous part of their day. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is specific to reading. Every reading lesson 
is a suggestion for strategies. Right now we're working through pre-reading, which is actually information that's helpful for non-readers and readers alike. It's literacy skills that help us use our observation and make sense of what we see. And of course, that's something that we need even as adults. Um, but all of our book stuff should be in a book bin. And when I had the lesson at the very beginning of the school year on Thursday, it was getting your spot ready. And we talked about seating and lighting and things like that. But it's really, really important for your child to also have their reading materials handy in their reading spot. The whole point is that when I'm done my lesson and your child has to go read to self and stay in one place for 10 minutes, that's not the time for them to have to go hunt for their um, reading material. So again, just like with your classwork materials, if you could have those things together in a bin, that would be great. This is what we actually use in the classroom. Every student has one like this that they use throughout the year. But again, you could use a shoe box, you could use a bag. It just has to be one thing where they can keep all of their reading materials for the week near their reading spot. Okay, let me show you what's, what should be, this is the type of thing that should be in their um, book bin for this week, this first, these first six days of school. They should have a variety of library books. We used books from our classroom libraries, and so every child got something different, but they're all relevant to the types of reading access, uh, activities we're doing in these first few weeks of school. I would like you to keep those together with the samples that I've sent. Now again, these samples are specific to the lessons that we're doing. And they're reading materials, even though to an adult they don't look like reading materials, they truly are. The children are building really important skills when they look at these materials. So please keep all of these, sometimes they're large color copies, keep those in their reading bin right next to their reading spot so that when it's time for them to go do their job for Read to Self, they have everything they need. All right, I know that you have been inundated with new material. I know that you're really struggling to make sure that, or, or um, striving, I should say, to make sure that your child has a good start. And I just wanted to say thank you once again on behalf of the kindergarten team. And please let us know if you have any additional questions. On Thursdays, Thursday late afternoon and Fridays, we have our switcheroo day, which is when you're gonna return your pocket, your plastic pocket with your child's name on it for a fresh pocket with new materials. Please, please remember to return not only your child's completed worksheets and drawings, but also to return those library books so that we can sanitize them and get them back into circulation. We do have a finite um, number of books in the classroom, so we need to make great use of them and hopefully not have them languishing under somebody's couch somewhere. That's another good reason to keep them in a bin because we really teach the children not to step on books, not to leave books lying around, not to eat or drink around books. So keeping them in a bin will help with that. All right, thanks again, we'll see you soon.